Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be continuing my journey to try and get this pen to work. This is a Conklin All-American in Golden Walnut. Love the looks of this pen. It's the worst pen I've bought. I have had nothing but problems with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the video with a clip of Gary from the past. And in that, I'll very briefly discuss the current state before I started doing this last round of tweets. Then when we come back, I'll let you know what changes I've made. We'll do a writing sample, we'll see how it's going. And then I'll briefly discuss my thoughts about what I want to try going forward. <laughs> So here we've got the Conklin All-American in Golden Walnut. I think the pen itself looks really nice, but it's the worst pen I've owned. I've had nothing but problems with it. When I got it, it came with a Conklin broad nib. The nib did not write, just would not work. The tines were all bent, so by the time I'd sorted the tines out and managed to get them straight, the nib, yes, it would write, but if I left it for more than five minutes, it would dry up and just be unusable. What I did is I swapped in a Jinhao nib, bit better, still not perfect. Yes, it writes, but again, if I leave it this time more than maybe half an hour, again, the nib dries out. So what I'm thinking is it must be something to do with the lining of the cap here. But by the look of it, it's got a plastic liner. So I haven't been able to quite work that out. What I'm going to try next is I'm going to take the nib out again and I'm going to try scoring down the feed, down the, the feeder tube in the feed with a craft knife, just to see if maybe scoring down there makes it a little bit wider, a little bit deeper. But if there's something which is dried up or, you know, something stuck, hopefully we'll shift that. That was my first problem with this pen. The second one, are you ready for this? The body came unstuck from the fittings. And if we look around it, it looks like there's a teeniest tiny bit of glue there. That was what was holding it on. If I turn it around, we've got no glue anywhere else. Just this little teeny bit. Now, it could have been in the Australian heat. I don't know, but it came off. It's useless, isn't it? It really is. I wouldn't even say it's bad quality control. I would say there was no quality control. That's how I feel about this pen at the moment. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to try putting some uh, super glue, I would think, or some kind of really strong adhesive on here, and then sticking this back on, and hopefully that will fit. I mean, it's very, it's not even tight. It's really, really loose. I've got to be honest, I can't express enough how disappointed I am by this pen. I'm going to go away now, and I'm actually going to spend a couple of weeks making changes, making tweaks to this pen. And what I'll do, once I've finished that, I'll come back and I'll provide an update so that you can see in the same video, this before, and then there'll be a time jump and hopefully you can see a fully working, fully functioning pen that hopefully will write like a dream. So here we are back in the present. Here we've got the Conklin All-American again. So the first thing I want to show, this was the easy fix. The body no longer comes off. What I did is on the metal insert that was running all the way around it, I put some craft glue so that now it goes all the way around the pen. Put this on, then left it for a few hours to make sure it's set properly. Had no issues with it since then. So that now works fine. The nib, I haven't touched the nib. It's still got that Jin Hao medium nib on there. So I've inked this pen up. What I've also inked up is a Jinhao 159. This is the pen that has the Conklin broad nib. So all I've done with the two pens is I'd actually taken out the nib and fade and swapped them over. So I've tried to keep it as similar as I can. So how have these two pens gone in terms of writing? Let's just move them out of the way. This is an endless recorder notebook, 68 GSM Tomai River paper. As you see, I entered this up Thursday of last week, and that was at 9.45 a.m. in the morning. Really good how I'll put the days and times on, so I've got an idea. 
I then wrote with both the pens just to give me, this is essentially immediately after inking. So we've got the Contraline All-American. In there I put Pilot Urashizuku Shinryoku. Then we've also got the Jinhao 159 with the Contraline nib. In there I put Diamine Ruby Blues. The Ruby Blues there, we're getting some nice sheen coming through that. I left it an hour. And then at 10.45 I wrote again. Had no issues. What I then decided is to do a wetness test. I should have thought about that at the start, but never mind. Ignore these splodges here. This is where I had a leak from the previous page. I left it then to the afternoon. So we're now talking 4.04 p.m. So that's what a good six-ish hours later. Again, no issues. They both wrote nice. Still with that ruby blues, still seeing some nice sheen. I left it overnight. So now we're talking, what, 12, about 16 hours later. Here, again, no issues with writing. I left it a day. After a day, well, a little, little bit more than a day, I had a lay in that morning. We can see we're starting to get a little bit of an issue here with that Conklin All-American with the Jinhao nib. But again, with the... Conklin nib in the Jinhao pen seemed to be fine. I then left it two days, or just under two days, till eight o'clock this morning. This is the result. A really scrappy writing there. And I've got to be honest, it was the same with the 159, and the 159 seemed to get starved as ink as I was going along. What I then did, I actually fetch it in. I just have to lean out of the way. Here's my strap paper. I just scribbled and scribbled and scribbled and scribbled until it started writing again. So didn't need to prime the feeds. I was just able to, by just scribbling, it soon started flowing. Here we've got the All-American back to the floor that we were seeing last week. And with a 159, not sure if that's maybe not as heavy as last week, but certainly we've still got the sheen coming through there. So... That was a testing that I did with the nibs, and I was finding, you know, as we can see here, still got the drying out issue. So let me fetch in the notebook of testing. This is Oxford Optic Paper. It's a nice fountain pen friendly paper. Using this because now I'm going to do some writing, and I thought, well, let's make sure it's a different type of paper just to see how it performs. So with the nibs we've got in here now, let's do some test writing. So we've got a Conklin. All American with a Jin Hao medium. The ink pilot Urashizuku Shinryoku. Drying times. So we got immediate, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. Still smudging a bit, but more or less dry. Going to move the mic so you can hear the pen right. That's very stretchy. I expect that though, because it's performing how I would expect a gin house steel nib to be. It's very, very stiff. Yeah, we can see that. Let's look for some line variation. We have got a little bit there, but still feeling stiff. And I need to put a fair bit of pressure on to get with any sort of line variation. We'll do our flow test. Once this pen's writing, at the moment, it 
performs really well it just dries out very quickly so that's one thing i do need to look at let's write with the other pen though so the other pen i'm just going to move this up so that i can get my hand into a right we've got here a jin hao 159 and in here we've got the conklin broad nib the ink is by die mine And it's Ruby Blues. Drying times, so we go media. This looks a lot drier. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, we're nearly dry there at 30 seconds. Let's just do belt and braces. One minute. Yeah, after a minute, that's nice and dry. I'll move the mic and write a sentence. That's nice to write with. There's a nice smoothness to it, but also a little bit of feedback. Line variation. Let's add the pressure. And then we'll do our S's. The nib actually feels very stiff when I'm doing this. Stiffer than the Jinhao did. Then flow. Again, once the pen's writing, the ink flows really, really nicely. I deliberately chose this Ruby Blues because I thought, well, it's a broad nib. Let's put a nice sheen in ink. And we do get some nice red sheen coming through. Hopefully you can catch that there as I wiggle the paper around. Let's position this so we've got both the pens in. So with the All-American, still getting issues with that nib drying out. What I think may be related is if I can somehow get this, no, let me try fetching in an LED light. Right, I'm fetching my LED light. Hopefully I can now get that in here and we can see this down the camera. It doesn't look like the plastic liner goes all the way down. It seems to go only maybe a third of the way down. I'm trying to get this so we can see it on the camera. There we go then it seems to be the bare wood. And then we go down and then we've got some metal rings. What I'm thinking of trying is, I have seen somewhere on the internet, I know I should never listen to anything on the internet, about putting a bit of glue in there and like swizzing it around, then tipping it out so that we get a lining on the wood, which might help with making it airtight. I think the reason that the nib dries out is because of the wood and it's not airtight and that's what's letting that airflow happen. It's my current guess anyway. So it's another experiment I want to try. Just not sure when because I'm a little bit hesitant to try it out, but that's the next step I can see. With the 159, I'm not sure if you can see on here, the nib is slightly bent near the end. What had happened is I do have a Jinhao 9056 and I tried swapping the caps over to see if the 9056 cap would fit. It didn't, and it actually squashed the nib a little bit. I was able to straighten out, but there's still a teeniest bit of a kink in there. So I'm not sure if that comes over on the camera. And I th think to myself, well, Gary, could that be what's causing that to dry out? Maybe that kink is just enough to, from keeping that nib wet when it's left for a couple of days. So something I need to look at. Both the pens up. Once the writing, as we've seen here, write really well. I'm now down to the issue with the nib drying out. It's not the end of the world issue. It's something I can sort, as I showed earlier on, just scribbling a little bit on the, another notepad. Soon got that going. The one thing I would say though, I paid 166 Aussie dollars for the Conklin All-American in Golden Walnut. 
I paid $7 for the Jinhao 159. As things stand, this golden walnut pen, I think it's not even worth $7. It really is. I've been ever so disappointed with it. And it's really put me off getting any other Conklin pens because I've had nothing but problems with this pen since day one. And I do keep looking at other Conklin pens and I keep thinking to myself, do I risk it? And the answer is always, sorry, no, I'm not. So this is where I've been going. And as I say, I've got some more steps I want to take. If you think of anything else, it may be worth me trying. Please let me know. I want to like this pen. I love the way it looks. I just want it to write consistently. And at the moment, it doesn't. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Do you know, it's such a shame with this pen. I want to love it. I really do. Because I think it looks so nice. It feels nice when I'm using it. It's just all the little things that are going wrong really puts me off. Are there any other things you can suggest that I try? I want to get this pen so it's consistent. And I want to actually learn what I'm doing as I'm going through the process. So in one respect, it's quite handy that it doesn't work properly. Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like. Every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.